when you're dealing with a mortgage broker, we're self-employed, we're working seven days a week. We're there to make sure our clients get the service that they need. And we also have designated underwriters from certain banks that are also working weekends. I was one of those clients and I, I don't know how Rita does it. I could contact her at any time and I'm just convinced that she doesn't sleep, eat or bathe because <laughs> she's so available. Welcome to Women's Wealth Canada. I'm Glory Gray. You know, the value of the real estate that Canadians own has always made up a large portion of our net worth. In the past 10 years, with the prices of homes skyrocketing in many areas, this is more true than ever. When I say net worth, I'm simply talking about the difference between the value of what you own, such as the market value of your home, or the balances in your checking and investment accounts, minus the amount of debt you owe, like the balance of your mortgage. That difference is your net worth. When I'm meeting with a client for the first time, I sometimes ask the following question. Now there are two people, Susan and Sally. Susan owns a home worth $500,000. She has a $200,000 mortgage and a $100,000 in her investment account. So Susan has a net worth of 400,000, that's 500,000 minus the 200,000 mortgage plus the 100,000 in her investment account. And that 100,000 is an investment account that she can draw income from. Now Sally also owns a $500,000 home, but she has no mortgage. She does, however, have a line of credit for 100,000 and she can borrow from that line of credit if she needs money. So Sally also has a net worth of 400,000, just like Susan. But which situation would you rather be in? Susan's situation, where she has a mortgage, but she also has cash investments, or Sally's situation, where she has no mortgage, but she could borrow money? Now here's the thing, there's no right answer to this question. Everyone's view is different. But the answer to the question helps me understand how comfortable a client is with carrying debt and whether they would prefer to save and invest as much as possible. That way we know how we want to go forward in our work together. Now if you are Sally and not Susan, you don't have a lot of investments to draw from. Most of your net worth is tied up in the value of your home. If that's the case, you'll be interested in today's discussion. Today we're going to talk about top ways to squeeze money from your home. And our guest is Rita Cousins, an independent mortgage broker with Mortgage Architects and part of the mother-daughter team of Rita and Rachel Cousins. Rita and her husband are based in Langley, BC, and Rachel and the grandchildren are in Nanaimo. So needless to say, they spend a lot of time going back and forth on the ferries. I met Rita back when Squatch and I were buying our first home, and I'm thrilled to have her on with us today because she has been such a great resource all these years. She's so knowledgeable. So join us now as we talk about top ways to squeeze money from your home. So in the past 20 years, uh, there's been a great deal of personal wealth built up in the value of our homes, particularly in the past 10 years, home values have really skyrocketed, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem, of course, is accessing that value, that capital, that income, and living off of the money. Two ways of accessing that value are a home equity line of credit, or a HELOC, and another way is reverse mortgage. So let's talk about that. What is the difference between a HELOC and a reverse mortgage? Well, a reverse mortgage is specifically designed for seniors over 55 and above. A HELOC is available to uh, anyone over the age of 19 who has equity in their home. So the, the home equity is specifically designed for seniors to keep them in their home for as, as long as they can. And one of the biggest differences is there's no payments on the home equity um, reverse mortgage. The home owner line of credits, HELOCs, etc. you have to pay at least interest only on those products. 
Okay, so how does someone apply for each one? So for um, the reverse mortgage um, through Home Equity Bank, there's a couple of other banks now that offer a similar product, but let's just keep it simple. Through Home Equity Bank, you, you apply either you know through a mortgage broker like myself who's certified with Home Equity Bank, or you can go onto their website and just easily apply. Because it's... Uh, focused on seniors, it's easier to talk to someone. So a lot of clients will call me and we'll have a conversation first. Um, quick and easy to apply. Um, there's no income requirements except that they have to make sure they have funds to pay property taxes and keep their home insurance up to date. That's really it in a nutshell. Is it is a C, uh, CHP mortgage, is that the same thing as reverse mortgage? Yeah, that's the home equity. That's their their Canadian home income mortgage that that's chip that's through home equity bank yeah okay. okay there's four products that they now actually offer and it's all for seniors 55 and above and the maximum loan to value that they can pull out of their home is 55 percent, depending on the age so this the older the senior is the more equity they are able to pull out so they have four products they have the income advantage which could supplement the senior's income monthly um, then they have the regular reverse mortgage where you get a lump sum, maybe 200000 depending on the value of your home. Then they have the max reverse mortgage, which can allow for a little bit more funds if the, pro um, the property is in a major urban area, detached, etc. So there's a little bit more specifications around the actual product. And then they have the open mortgage now, which is designed to... Um, be more of a bridge loan, which allow people to not have a big penalty or whatever if they want to stay in their home, buy another home, and then sell that home when they're ready and, and in. And so it's not so much of a deceival for them when they're moving into their new home. So the Home Equity Bank has four products specifically designed for seniors at this point in time. The Home Equity Line of Credit, which all the majority of the banks offer, um, now, those you have to income qualify for, and at the Bank of Canada stress test of currently 5.25% as of today, right? So you have to provide your income documents, you, right? You have to make sure that you can qualify for the payments on those home equity lines of credits. So would it make, would it be better to apply for a, um, a HELOC before you retire when you have a higher income? Absolutely. If you if you look at just a, a quick guideline based on today's stress test of 5.25, um, you qualify for um, on an income, a net income of around 100000 you qualify for a mortgage of approximately 500000 so if you if your income goes down to twenty nine thousand because you're now retired and you're on CPP or OAS, you're going to um, see a huge reduction in the amount of mortgage that you can qualify on a reduced pension to income. And you ha also have to understand if if you do go with the home equity reverse mortgage, those funds that you pull out are not taxable. They are not going to negatively affect your CPP, your OAS, your, your, your you know, your, your, those type of pension incomes, which a lot of people, if they in, in turn instead pull out their investments, those are obviously taxable on their, on their income tax and could affect their pensions going forward. And using that reverse mortgage allows us to access equity, access an income without pulling out our investments. We can keep them in there and can have them continue to grow. And those funds that you pull out of a reverse mortgage, they can be used to provide to your children for an early inheritance. They can be used to, you know, to purchase a vacation home. They can be used to pay off debt. Um, it, it, it all depends on what works best for those clients at that point in time. And how is a reverse mortgage repaid? A reverse mortgage is not repaid until the clients actually sell the home or... Um, you know, they, they pass on and then the estate pays up. It's a regular mortgage, so it's registered exactly the same as a home equity line of mortgage, a regular first mortgage. It's, a, it's an actual mortgage, so there's no payments while the clients are in the home and the property taxes are up to date and the home insurance is up to date and the home is in, in good condition. So it's only paid once the home is sold um, or the client's pass on and, and then the estate takes care of the mortgage. 
Is there a limit to the amount of money that amount of income that can be streamed? I mean, what if I live for 60 years? <laughs> what, and well, that's why they, they do it very selective, right? They only go up to 55% of the value of their home. And over the, the course of these home equity mortgages, 99% of these mortgages have proven to have equity still left in the home when they're sold. Okay. Right. It, it's, it's a completely different product from down in the United States where they, they um, you know, their mortgages were quite a bit different. These are designed to keep seniors in their home versus going into a care home. And that's why the income advantage one, um, I've had clients uh, supplement their income by 5000 a month to bring in a carried every day, to bring in, you know, the dialysis machine or take them to their, you know, appointments, etc., so that they can stay in their home and they can have the carrieds come into their home versus going into a home. And, that, and that's, that's so important. Now, returning back to the HELOC, um, let's say that I decided to obtain a home equity line of credit while I was still working. I was approved for, let's, you know, a, a couple of hundred thousand, we'll say 200,000. And then I retire. So now my income has gone down. Is there, do I have to apply every year? Is it just one and done? At, at this point, no. Um, obviously, it would depend on the financial institution you are dealing with if their policies changed. But as far as currently, um, no, you would just have access to those funds. But you are paying, you know, the interest on what you draw monthly on those funds. As opposed to the reverse mortgage where there are no payments. Right, correct. Excellent. Now, let's talk about some other. So those are two sources that we can get value out of our homes that's locked up. If I decide to buy a rental property with a mortgage, you know, let's say I go out and I buy a new property. I'm thinking about becoming a landlord. I'm not currently a landlord. I'm thinking about making this property a rental. It doesn't currently have a renter in it. Can I use the anticipated rents I'll receive to qualify for that mortgage? Well, you can, yeah, absolutely. So the banks generally, as a guideline, use 50% of the estimated rental income. So if you were looking at renting a house out for 2000 they would use $1,000 of the rental income. But then they also deduct off the property taxes and, if applicable, strata fees, right? So, you know, you could add that to your income, 50% of the rental income. Do I have to prove that I can get that anticipated rent? It, uh, it depends on the financial institution. They all have slightly different policies in place. Some of them will want a um, appraiser's economical rent, Schedule A it's called. So you would have to have a, an appraiser go out and take a look at the properties in the area and see if it is you know, um, going to substantiate the $2,000 a month rental income. And they do a full analysis for the bank. Some banks require just a tenancy agreement in place prior to. Right. So you would have to have somebody who you know who's going to rent it out for 2000 a month. Okay. And as long as that's done before closing, is that the idea for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any common problems you run into with rental property mortgage qualifying? Some lenders um, actually surcharge on the interest rates for rental properties. And the reason for that is, is because it's a rental property. It's not um, your home right? So there could be more wear and tear, right? So there's more added risk. Um, you know, you don't really know what's going on there. There are insurance rules when, you know, you, when you buy an investment property that you're supposed to inspect the house once a month, etc. To dig more into that, you would probably want to have a uh, home insurance broker on your um, podcast as well. But the banks look at where the property is, how close you're going to be in relation to being able to know what's going on in the home. Mm -hmm. okay. So those are the risks. Other than that, it's, I mean, generally the banks will prefer, they will prefer you own your own home first before you buy an investment property. Okay, thanks for that. It's a tough market for home buyers right now, especially first time home buyers. If I know I want to buy a home in a year, what steps can I take to make it easier to qualify next year? Definitely speak to a mortgage broker and, and put an application forward. We can, we can tell as soon as we get the application in what you're going to qualify for or what you need to do in order to pay down some debt to get your servicing within guidelines. Pre-approval mortgages um, are good for four months. So when you look at even one year out, it's not that far away when you're looking at four pre-approvals to, to get you there. 
Um, it is important though to have a credit report or pull your own credit report or know what your credit report is with Equifax so that you know what your score is and what you need to do to improve your score as well. Um, and generally I find the best um, information that you can get is, is in discussion with the mortgage broker and they can guide you accordingly to make sure you can buy within a year. How can we pull our own credit report in Canada? You just contact Equifax, equifax.ca. Yeah, and you can do that on the internet. Um, there is a phone number you can call as well, but most of it is done online these days. There are two credit systems in Canada. There's TransUnion and Equifax, but the majority of the banks use um, Equifax, so that's your best bet to go through them. And if I pull my own, does it ding my credit? No. No, it doesn't. It's not a hit. So a lot of clients will pull their own credit and forward it to me so I can take a look and let them know what they need to work on versus me pulling it. That's a good idea. Yeah. And one thing too with the mortgage broker, like we'll pull your credit and then we'll send it off to the banks for pre-approval. The banks depend, you know, we can send it off four or five, six banks, right? They all use our one credit report. Whereas if you yourself went to the bank, um, you know, five different banks, you would then get five hits. So that's one of the benefits of using a mortgage broker. You only get one hit on your credit report in order to uh, secure multiple pre-approvals. And there's a lot of benefits to, to using a mortgage broker. And for our listeners, Rita is my personal mortgage broker. <laughs> uh, and I, so obviously I believe in what she, she and Rachel are doing. So let's, that's actually a good segue. Let's talk about the difference between a mortgage broker and going to your local bank. Yeah, so um, where are we? I had clients call me on the weekends where they had started the pre-approval process with their bank. Um, and then because of the market and the way it is right now and the multiple offers, um, all offers were being accepted on Monday at 6 o'clock. And when they reached out to their bank again, um, it being over a weekend, they were told that they would need a month in order for subject removal. And at that point in time, their realtor got involved and said, we can't, we won't even be accepted. We're not even competing with a month subject removal, let alone needing an appraisal, etc." So this was on Friday night, uh, Saturday morning, I received their application. Um, had them pre-approved officially and then yesterday they were successful in getting their offer accepted uh, because when you're dealing with a mortgage broker you're not dealing with the regular channels in a bank the banks are um, unfortunately due to COVID-19 they're working still on reduced hours they were working with reduced staff um, and so when you're dealing with a mortgage broker, we're self-employed, we're working seven days a week, we're there to make sure our clients get the service that they need. And we also have designated underwriters from certain banks that are also working weekends, that are also available to us and can answer and pre-approve our deals on the weekends. So you get that added service and you also get like with Rachel and myself, we've got over 45 years experience, which is um, a lot more and helps us be able to um, put the puzzle together quickly and help the clients get their um, files approved. So that's what I find is one of the most beneficial reasons to using a mortgage broker. And a lot of the pushback I hear is I want to use my bank, my bank. Well, we have access to almost all of the banks. And when we look at each application, we will know which product is going to work the best for those clients based on our experience. And we can get them done so much faster than having to make an appointment waiting, you know, sometimes up to a week to get into the branch just to make that initial appointment, then the initial appointment back in the branch to bring your documents in, etc. It's it's quite a process through the branches versus using a mortgage broker which can get can get you done within a couple of days. And you do all that legwork and you have those relationships that you've built up over all the years with all the individual financial financial institutions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's nice seeing, you know, um, first time buyers get into the market because it is really challenging right now. The, the rental market is so expensive. And then the, the rules that the governments have implemented have, you know, restricted, 
you know, first time buyers, it's, it's, it's so challenging. So to have someone to help them hold their hands, get them there, you know, maybe talk to the parents to see what we can do as well. It just makes it that much easier and takes the stress off of them. So again, if I'm looking to qualify in the next year, maybe some of the things I can start doing is perhaps paying down debt. Is that one? Well, it depends on what debt you're paying down because there are rules for um, lines of credits, um, how much payments are um, allowed. So if you owe $10,000 on your line of credit and you're only probably paying interest only on it, so you're paying maybe $60, $70 a month. Well, the rule though for the banks is that we have to take a 3% payment of that. So we would have to calculate in a $300 payment. So when you're trying to figure out what debt you should pay down, that's when you need to have a mortgage broker who knows what payments are being calculated that affect your debt servicing in order to qualify for a mortgage. Um, and also, we no credit is as bad as bad credit. So you don't want to pay off all your credit and not have any recent credit showing. The, the, the banks need to know that you are responsible and that you can maintain your credit payments as you go along. So a rule of thumb is you want to keep your credit card balances at 30% of the limit. And that will help you maintain a score over 700. So... Now I'm jumping into credit scores, and this is another whole different topic. But um, credit scores, you know, they run from 400 up to 900, 900 being the best. And, you know, so the lower your score, the worse it is. So the banks want at least a credit score generally above 650 or 680. Anything above 700 is good, 750, et cetera. The higher the number, the better. So if you pay off all your credit debt, um, you're, you, you could negatively pull your score down because there's no credit revolving. The, the Equifax system does not know that you're paying your credit because they, don't, they haven't seen how you're managing your debt load, right? So always best to speak to um, uh, either you know, a mortgage broker or somebody like that or Equifax, how do I get my score up? Um, and there's many times where Rachel and I will send out information on how to improve your credit score. And, and you can improve that score within a couple of months if you know what to focus on in that credit report. So that's why, you you know, t trying to do it on your own, it's it's hard because we have so many years experience in seeing a credit report, knowing what we do, you know, you can get this fixed in a couple months or even, you know, three weeks if you do this. Right. So, um, yeah, and, and it can easily be repaired, but it's just knowing what to do. So do you often talk to new home buyers who are thinking about a year out and they is it OK if they come to you and say, we're thinking about this? This is our goal. What should we work on so that we can get our mortgage through you in a year? Oh, absolutely. We do that all the time. Absolutely. I have clients that I've worked with like for over four or five years that have now just purchased and, you know, they're, <laughs> they're so excited, right? They've got their plan, right? Um, you know, some hiccups along the way and, you know, finally it'll work and, and you get them in their home. I mean, there's nothing more um, like good and heart feeling than owning your own home, right? And, and that first step of, you know, getting into your own home and that opening up that door to your new life, right? So we help many clients over the years, Glory, all the time. Yeah. Mm. And as I, as I mentioned, I was one of those clients and I, I don't know how Rita does it. I could contact her at any time and I'm just convinced that she doesn't sleep, eat or bathe because <laughs> she's so available. <laughs> yeah. I, and, you know, I, um, again, I take it to heart. I, I, I just, it's, it's such a, a truly rewarding feeling when, when you've got clients and, and, they, and they've made it. They've bought it. I mean, buying a home is a huge investment. The average prices are over half a million dollars, right? So that's a huge investment for clients. And it just is it's so um, heartwarming when, when, you know, when they get their keys. And, you know, I'm sure the realtors feel the same way too. But, you know, it's interesting because the realtors are out there running back and forth, back and forth to the houses. And, you know, our job, we sit and wait right? We've got them pre-approved and then we sit and wait and then boom, they've got an accepted offer and then we're on, right? And so then we're back in the in the game of uh, helping them, you know, move forward with everything. But it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's a passion of ours for sure. 
What's the best way to for our listeners to get a hold of you? Um, our website, um, www.cousinsmortgageteam.com or email us at uh, mortgages at ritacousins.com. But our website, I think, is the best because they can just put a quick note for us to call and give us a summary of what they want to chat about. And then it populates right into our email. Um, Rachel and I, um, we're a mother-daughter team, just uh, in case the listeners don't know. And whether you reach out to Rachel or myself, uh, we both work like as one. So... um, if she's busy, um, you know, with the kids going back to school or whatnot, then I can jump in and, you know, help the clients at that point in time. So there's no difference between calling one or the other. It, it works like seamlessly. And what areas of Canada do you work? Uh, we're licensed in the province of British Columbia. Our head office, though, is in Ontario. So we are able to access other provinces through our head office. Um, I'm located on the mainland, um, and of course Rachel's on the island, and so the grandkids are on the island, so I go back and forth uh, quite a bit, um, which makes uh, it that much more um, rewarding, I guess, right? Because I get to see the grandkids, and then I get to work, and you know, I come back, and yeah, it's it's really good. Sounds like a great life. <laughs> so thanks so much for being on Women's Wealth Canada with us today, Rita, and being a person who can hold our hand through this scary time of wanting to buy our own homes or finding out ways that we can get income from the ones that we own. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, Glory. That was Rita Cousins, independent mortgage broker with Mortgage Architects, and you'll find links to the Cousins Team website in the show notes. That's all for today. If this podcast helped you, please subscribe and please let others know about it so we can help them too. If you have financial questions, you can schedule a free 30-minute phone call with me where you can get answers to your specific questions. Just pop over to my website, glorygray.com, and contact us. Until next time, this is Glory Gray, your personal trainer for financial fitness, telling you to take charge of your finances, plan for the future, but most of all, enjoy today and bye for now. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment, tax, or legal advice. It is not an offer to sell or buy or an endorsement, recommendation, or sponsorship of any entity or security cited. Mutual funds offered through Portfolio Strategies Corporation. Other products and services provided through Glory Gray Wealth Solutions. Mm-hmm.